Hello and welcome to the third video in this series on assessment in ESL. In this video, we're going to be talking specifically about evaluation, so summative assessment, not formative assessment. We're focusing on how to evaluate and give grades according to the PFEQ. So before we get started, a quick recall question. Are grades feedback? If you remember from our previous video, grades are not a form of feedback, but at least not according to Grant Wiggins. In fact, grades are a form of summative assessment, and they're information about where a student really aligns with ministry standards for skills at a given age or level. So the ministry has taken time to set out and say for each one of the competencies, so each of the three competencies, what students should be able to do at what level. For example, this is taken directly from the Programme de Formation d'Education de Québec, the PFEQ. By grade six, a student should be able to have a short conversation with an English speaker. And they have detailed what that actually looks like. So the student should be able to introduce themselves, ask a few simple questions in this conversation, um, and give some simple answers. Okay, so that's how the conversation looks like. So these are some of the checklists. So when you're grading a student, you are grading their ability to, yes, have the conversation, but you can break it down. Are they able to introduce themselves? Are they able to ask and answer some simple questions when they're having a short, short conversation? And this is actually really helpful because it'll help you design your activities in class, the kind of activities you're going to do with students to help them practice these things. So the message, the criteria here is that the message should be clear even if there are some mistakes. And communication should be relatively fluent. So they should not hesitate too much when they're able to introduce themselves, ask those questions, and answer some questions in turn. Okay, so that's, that's what we should be able to do in grade six. Now there are descriptors for all different levels um, and all, on all three of the competencies. And we'll talk about where we can find those again. Before we get there, I want to use a metaphor with you. So when you're giving a grade, trying to figure out what grade to give is by, it, the metaphor I want to use is thinking about hitting a target. So how close are they to getting that bullseye? And the reason that we're going to <laughs> need to know this is when you're hitting the target, you have to write down the grades. This is where you give, this is a typical kind of report card that you might fill in. So if we're looking at, say, grade three, which is cycle two, um, you're going to be writing in the different competencies for each term. So see competency one, competency two, you might give a, a grade of two out of five or three out of five. Some terms you don't give the, comp the grades. So something like this. So the group average might be two here, three. We'll talk about what the twos and threes are in a minute. So really you need to figure out how close is the student to hitting the target. If the target is one, one in the middle, this might be a two, a three, a four, and a five. Okay, so one is exceeding it, two is um, doing really well, three is hit, close enough hitting it, and four and five. So this is lovely. So this is what a report card might look like. You can replace these with a, A's, B's, and C's if you think that's better. That's great, but you know, how do we decide if the student gets an A or a B plus? What is the target exactly? Can we give like an approximate mark? These are all things I've been asked. And what if the student's trying really, really hard? They're not doing super well, but you can see they're putting an effort. Shouldn't that count? All right, let's take a look at these questions one by one. So the first thing is to understand what does on target look like? How do you know if the student has hit that target? We're going to start by using descriptors. These are what um, describe what the students do. What do they do or what do they look like when they're on target? And you can find these in two places, in the PFEQ, the Programme de Formation d'Education de Québec, and in the Framework for Evaluation of Learning. So let's have a look. This is the Programme de Formation de, de, de l'École de Québec or Education de Québec for English Second Language. This is for grade one and two. So I'm starting right back at the beginning. 
But there is one of these for every single level that you're going to teach. So grade one all the way through secondary five in high school, there's a, there's a program for each one. This is just my example for today. Now, the important thing to remember is that the PFEQ uses a competency-based approach. Um, and this is kind of a paradigm shift for a lot of teachers. So what we're actually evaluating, what we're grading is the student's ability to interact with another person in English, to understand English texts and to write and produce texts in English. It's not their ability to memorize grammar structures. We'll talk about that a little later. Um, it's not so sort of typical nine on 10 quizzes that we have are not actually assessing students' competencies. All right, back to the grade ones and twos. Remember that these are the kind of kids we're talking about. I took grade one and two for um, one, re one reason in particular, which is that they have a different, slightly different program in elementary than they do um, in any other year. So cycle two, three, all the way up. So uh, starting in, in grade one and grade two, there are only two competencies. The first one is to act on understanding of text. So the teacher would tell a story, sing a song, and the kids respond. And the other one, competency two, is to communicate orally in English. Starting in grade three, there's three competencies. So grade three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, there are three competencies. But grade one and two, there's only two. All right. Have they confused you yet? Um, okay, so if I open up the program for grade one and two, there are key features of communicating orally in English. What are we looking for? What are the descriptors? So the descriptors are here. What are the end of cycle outcomes? By the end of elementary cycle one, students have acquired overall understanding of the language, blah, blah, blah. They participate orally in the classroom life using English. Um, there, I think this is <laughs> not realistic only English, but there you are. They transmit simple messages as they respond verbally. They express needs, okay? They demonstrate understanding of oral messages. They use some words, some strings of words like, hello, my name is book. Um, it's a cow. And these are the kind of things that they, that they should be able to do. They transmit simple messages. They listen to the messages. They look at the speaker. They transmit a couple of different things um, and they try and use their English. Great, so that's what we want them to do. That's what it looks like. So how do we know if they get an A or a B or a C or a one or a two or a three? Well, the ministry published a few years ago something called uh, competency scales, les échelles de compétences. So their target is actually three here. So if we were gonna look at our bills, bullseye target, um, the red would be the inner circle, then we have our kind of outer circles. Um, then five is kind of like the outer edge of the circle. All right, so the competency scales are published for each one of the levels and each one of the um, competencies. And again, I'm using elementary cycle one, so grade one and two, and I'm using co uh, the competency for speaking. Okay, so actually passing is acceptable, so level three, and this is what we're looking for. So the students use English words, strings of words, they participate, they combine words to communicate brief message. They can respond. So if the teacher says today is, the students will shout Monday, right? So that is what we're looking for. That's on target. And these are great because it shows you what above and below target looks like. So in elementary cycle one, so it's grade one and two, on target looks like this. Kids can use English words, short expressions, they participate orally. So when the teacher says something, they respond. Um, they combine words to communicate brief messages. Hello, goodbye, see you tomorrow. If the teacher can, they can ask the teacher, repeat please. If the teacher says, sit down, take out your book, they can do that. Okay, want a bathroom, toilet, please. Okay. So this is what we are aiming for. Anything above and beyond that? Above and beyond looks like this. Um, they ask the teacher more specific instructions. They provide many words. They experiment with language. They can do short exchanges. Um, 
and kind of go beyond. You can see when you get beyond, you can see things like spontaneously or initiating. They're kind of more autonomous. Okay, so let's check what you know. We looked at grade one and two. What does a student, what does it look like when a student's communicating orally using a competency one at an appropriate level in secondary three ESL? So these are the 15 year olds, right? We've gone way, way past the five, six, seven year olds into the 15 year olds. So our first thing to do is open up the PFEQ and have a look at the evaluation criteria there. So these are the things we're looking for. Are they participating in oral interaction? Um, what's the content of their message like? Their articulation of the message. So, and you're gonna see that there are descriptors here. The content of the student message is coherent, it's pertinent. Um, they're able to elaborate. They demonstrate a willingness. They speak English in class with confidence. They contribute to oral interaction. They persevere. Um, they have a good command of functional language. They're fluent. Okay, so that's the first thing that we're going to look at, these things in here. Participation, content, articulation. Note that we don't um, grade their management of strategies and resources. When the program was first published, we were expected to do that, but it, the task proved more or less impossible. So the ministry eventually dropped that. We were asked to give feedback and sort of how they're doing with this, but really we're evaluating these three things. Um, remember that you can also take a look at the competency scales. So we have the descriptors on the, on the PFEQ, and we have the competency scales. I haven't touched on the framework for evaluation of learning, but we can, we'll go through that after. Okay, so an acceptable competency development is here, just a reminder. So this is what it kind of looks like when they're doing well in C1. In secondary three, this is what it looks like when they're above, and that's what it looks like when they're below. Here's a question I get a lot, especially from new teachers. Um, when you're starting to evaluate, it's really hard because some kids really can't reach that goal yet. Um, they're still not able to communicate with fluency, but they're putting in a lot of effort and you just wanna increase their grades. Well, this is where we're going to dip into our feedback. So something like this. Um, you Even though Kaya is maybe below level below where maybe we can say stuff like she's put a lot of effort into English and she's paying off she's improving she tries hard uh, you can provide them strategy so you can see that we're talking about the how why and how in here in the comments so even though she may not have passed her level you're making the the B or the C sound like an achievement using concrete and specific feedback okay now I know what you're going to say to me, if you're going to give all that concrete and specific feedback on report cards, you're going to kill yourself, right? Because it takes so much time to put in all this feedback. Um, I've developed a few strategies over the year. You, if you know me at all, you know I'm a big fan of lots and lots and lots of feedback. I give a lot of feedback on all the assignments I get from my students. So here's some tips that I've found over the years. So the first one is to remember that you're evaluating competencies. So you don't need to grade every piece of work a student does. Now this is kind of um, shocking to a lot of people, but I used to get my students to practice orally in class all the time. We would do short, quick, and dirty interactions. We'll talk more about that when we hit on the C1. Um, so lots and lots of frequent opportunities to interact orally in English, and I would evaluate one or two kids a, a day. Uh, in terms of writing, we would do lots of short and quick writing exercises and I would put them in a portfolio, which is one of the other tips. So you can tell the kids everything counts because they always want to know, est-ce que ça compte, madame? Does it count? Everything counts. You just don't have to let them know that it, you're not necessarily counting it towards the report card, but towards learning. The other trick I had was um, any sort of evaluation that was ongoing, I would stop counting things for the report card two weeks before it was due. So let's say that your report card's due January 31st. Well, I would stop collecting stuff by January 15th latest. Um, and then the next two weeks I would start a new unit. We would have be, you know, exploring a new topic, but I would just be in the background, just tabulating all the stuff that I'd collected from, you know, November and December up to January. And that kind of took the pressure off because if you have tests and stuff going on right until the last minute, 
you're going to find yourself getting really, really stressed. You can't get all that correcting done and the report cards done at the same time. Um, another good trick is to keep a bank of common feedback. You're going to find that, you know, especially if you're in a situation where you have um, 100 or 200 students, that you're often giving the same feedback over and over and over and over again. So I like to start by giving some feedback to the first five or six different students. And then I find I start to make variations on the same comments. So I, I record the feedback I'm giving and I'll copy and paste and I'll adjust. If I notice that they're often, you know, using some strategies or need to use some strategies or um, they're participating well, or maybe they're participating too much, or maybe they're using too much French when they should be using English, you know, I keep a bank of those comments and I adjust, I copy, paste and adjust. And it makes things go a lot faster. Um, finally, I mentioned this before, writing portfolios really transformed the way that I evaluate. So um, rather than, you know, giving written tests or projects constantly, I would do lots of short writing exercises, put them in a portfolio, the students would select their best work, polish it up, and that's what I would evaluate. They love that because it gave them a chance to show off their best stuff anyway. Win, win, win. Okay, here's the issue. Um, what do we do with grammar tests? You know, those, those classic tests on the past tense verbs or prepositions, um, vocabulary tests, reading comprehension. So what do we do with those when it comes to report card time? Well, here's the deal. Vocabulary words, um, verbs, are, um, grammar and vocabulary and things like that are actually part of what we call related content. And this is different from skills, which is, uh, so remember that the PFEQ is actually a skill-based program. We're evaluating students' skills. The content is what we use to help us read or write a text or under, you know, understand a conversation. So that's an important concept to keep in mind. There's the related content, right? So we can see here that we have a vocabulary, grammar, these fall under the language repertoire. So expressions that we use, vocabulary that we use. So how do we count content? A lot of the content that we count is, can be found in one or two competencies. Remember the focus should be on the competencies. What we're teaching, what we're evaluating are competencies. Competency one, two, and three. So have a look at the evaluation criteria. So we really need to create situations where students speak, read, listen, watch, write, and produce language. If you must include content in your evaluation, and you're going to be teaching vocabulary and teaching functional language and teaching different kinds of text to help students speak, read, and write. But if you really want to include those grades in the report card, you need to ask yourself this question. What competency does this content help the students develop? A lot of it will fall under competency three. So for example, the past tense, this is competency three, the past tense, um, this is for grade five, six. Competency is language conventions targeted for the task. So this is grammar. For learning past tense, it's a language convention. Okay, they can apply the language convention targeted for the task. And again, you notice that it's really linked to the kind of communication task. So for example, um, if I wanted to evaluate grammar, it would go under competency three, but I really need to link it to a situation where students are writing texts. So if I'm focusing on the past tense, I wanna help them write a short story about a scary experience, for example. To get them to do that, I'm going to need to teach them some key vocabulary for the task. So, for example, um, haunted house, night, terror, dark. So that's where our vocabulary comes in. You can give them a little vocabulary quiz. Um, you can target key grammar. So you're going to teach them the past tense. Went, walked, saw, jumped. And you're going to evaluate how they then use that vocabulary in past tense and maybe even adjectives, right, when they write their story. And again, this is the targeted language conventions. So for example, if I was going to do this short story with my grade six students, I might um, set aside 15 points for competency three on you know, formulation 
of the text and uh, this is what I would ask them to do. I want them to use and spell at least five of our targeted vocabulary words correctly, use and spell at least five of our verbs in the past tense correctly, and use at least five adjectives we've been working on correctly. So you see how that works? You can evaluate grammar, you can evaluate vocabulary, um, just make sure it's really linked closely to one of the competencies, so a writing task. And that's it. So the next video we're going to talk about is evaluation tools specifically for competency one. Thanks for watching.